Uh, thank you all for joining us for the 2020 Santa Fe Independent Film Festival Directors Panel. We're so happy to have here the directors of Rustic Oracle, Small Town Wisconsin, and Materna. Uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, the first thing I uh, want to touch on is creativity. Um, the festival's focus is on creativity. And I'd like to know, is that something that informs your work? Does it inform your, the choices you make in uh, which projects to take on? And um, it, it, are you looking for chances to be creative? Are you looking for creative collaborators? Um, and uh, David, maybe you can uh, start us off. Uh, well, thanks for having me here. Uh, this is really cool. I love Santa Fe. Um, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to try to answer that. Uh, I, I, I try to be uh, creative. I, I think that's, I think the, the desire to create is, uh, is at the heart of what I do. I think what we all do and I think what we all want to do in all our professions. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, it's, I, I, I'm not quite sure exactly if that's answering your question, but um, yeah, we are creating art uh, that we hope connects with other people and speaks to people and makes us feel uh, less alone and um, more inspired and um, yeah, just trying to connect uh, get better. <laughs> Those are all uh, parts of why I do. Um, I look for people who, uh, to work with people who share similar values. Um, I think when I was first starting out, um, it was just like kind of whoever was there. <laughs> it was like, Oh, you, you know, you want to work, you want to do this. You like me. Okay, great. Let's go. Let's, let's, let's make things together. Um, I think the thing that I've found is uh, that the best work comes from having uh, not just the best people around you, but the right people, the people who you really, which hopefully are also the best people, um, but, you know, the people that want similar things and are chasing similar things and, uh, yeah, are, so I don't know if that helps. Thank you. Uh, Sonia, can you uh, chime in a little bit? I think, uh, it, it, you know, David's picture, uh, there's a lot of uh, creativity going on. It's, um, you know, four different stories taking place simultaneously uh, between these characters on the subway. And, um, you know, Sonia, I'm uh, really excited to hear your take on how uh, cre creativity informs your work. Well, honestly, I don't think of, uh, creativity in the sense of like pushing the medium forward. I don't think of that when I'm when I make a film because for me the most important thing when I'm starting a project is what I'm trying to say, like the actual message and making sure that what I'm trying to say has a way to to, to reach an audience. But I, of course, it's still creativity because well, first of all, we're we're creating something. We're creating a film. Um, but I think also for it to, 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 to stimulate us as, as filmmakers, well, for me at least, of course I wanna push myself and, and go beyond what I did in the previous work. So in that sense, I guess, creativity almost just comes naturally in the process of making the film, but I, I don't start off thinking, okay, well, how can I break the boundaries of filmmaking with this project? I don't think of that, I, I focus mainly on like the characters and what I'm trying to say because most of the work that I do I guess is really geared towards like talking about social issues that bother me so I think that's more at the heart of, of my my process when it comes to creating content. Um, so Niels the first question is about creativity how it informs your work and um, you know how did you look for a chance to be creative with small town Wisconsin? Um, were there opportunities that arose during the production? Yeah, I mean, the uh, 
first of all, they, uh, thank you for the question. It's a really good and good question that could probably set me off talking for a long time. But uh, for me, the, the, the source of, of creativity is always elusive. It always seems different with every project. Uh, certainly when I'm writing, I, I, I still am trying to figure out how writing works. It changes every time I, I write, what, when, when things actually start to click in. And it's always about, in, in the writing phase, it's always for me about trying to get to that place where the subconscious can take over. Um, and on Small Town Wisconsin, uh, this is a script that was uh, written by a fellow Milwaukee native, Jason Notchek. And when uh, I met with Jason, after we tried to make the film once, and when I uh, hadn't succeeded, and I went back to him and I said, I'd particularly like to make the film now, it was right around 2000. 16, 17, when Wisconsin was factoring into uh, our national election in such a prominent way. And I thought, you know, this film, even though the film is not at all political, it's about a far northern Wisconsin father who finds out he's lost shared custody of his son. He wants to take him on one last father-son trip to remember him by before he's going to move out to Arizona. And it's really very much a coming together of a family story with a tremendous amount, I hope, of humor and heart. But I saw a possibility to background some of what was going on in Wisconsin in the film. And, and Jason said, take it, make it your own. And uh, so I ran with it. And, um, and so, so first there's that step of, of, of actually making a film. And then, yeah, my gosh, when you, when you start then uh, ending, ending up with casting your film, and I ended up with the, a dream cast for me, the, the, the the, the two things I kept saying as I looked for financing were, I want, well, the single, single thing that dro drove both of those, I said, I really want this film to feel very authentic. And so I need to shoot in Wisconsin, which doesn't have a tax credit. So that was a challenge. And I said, I really would like to be able to go to the right actors. If there's a great name actor, great, but I, I, please don't limit me. I, I, I was asking producers and I ended up with uh, just a really lovely cast who once we were all together, to circle back to creativity. It's become such a collaborative process at that point. And um, you know, for, on our small budget, I, I still was able to get in two weeks of rehearsal time before we, uh, before we started shooting. And that was, uh, that was really where we found the film. Uh, and it just surprises along the way. And, you know, and I'm sure like everybody will talk about it, when you hit these hit obstacles in filmmaking, often the outcome is uh, far better than had you not hit those obstacles. So anyway, I could keep talking for far too long, so I'll stop but, there. Um, you know that I, I think we can go right into my next question um, with you, Sonia. And uh, it's just specific to this year. And um, how is the current state of everything that's going on in the country, in the world, um, changed your release plan for the film, if it has, or affected uh, you know, what, what you thought would happen for the film this year and uh, how you're now planning on rolling it out? Yeah, it totally, definitely affected the film, but ironically, it affected it in a kind of like a positive way almost because uh, we were set to release the film in March in theaters and of course you know what what happened in March happened to everyone around the world uh, but especially March specifically in North America and so our theatrical release was canceled and we were because it's a small independent film it's not like we were expecting a big release anyway it was just you know limited release and so after that we figured okay well let's just go straight to VOD we'll do virtual releases here and there and what happened was in Canada when here when things started opening again, like the the theaters and everything, they didn't have any big American films to show. <laughs> so they actually needed all of these independent Canadian films to fill to fill the screens to put on the screens. So we actually got a wider release um, uh, in Canada than we would have had in March. So we had that at the end of August. Um, played for like four weeks here in Quebec, played uh, two weeks in Ontario, in, in Ontario. And now it's like the second or third week out in, in, in BC. So that's kind of unexpected. We kind of had 
killed that idea of, of putting people in seats in theaters, but I guess it kind of just naturally happened. And the other thing that happened, and that's, that's the sadder part and the not so fun part is, um, this year really sucks socially, you know, it's a really crappy year. Things are not going well. And uh, even here in, in Canada, there's, there's lots of um, racism going around and social intolerance. And, and so the content of, of, of the film has sparked um, a bit more debates, uh, a bit more cries for, for, for justice and action. So I'm, and on one end, I'm kind of happy that it's it's uh, pushing uh, the conversation forward, but at the same time, I'm really sad to see that we still need to be having these conversations. You know, like, anyways, it's just, ugh. Niels, it's a strange year, of course. Um, has that changed in any way compared to what you had uh, planned going forward in the spring? The, so yeah, release plans. I mean, you know, I went into this knowing that uh, our next step would be to uh, apply to, we made it without distribution in place so that I knew that the next step would always be applying to festivals and hopefully to get into great places like Santa Fe. Uh, we had our world premiere at Sarajevo. So you start trying to get your head above water as an independent film. Uh, it's, I'm sure everybody else agrees it's been a particularly challenging year on, on, on the uh, release front as, as it is on everything else in life with the pandemic. And so it's navigating this process has been different this time around uh, just because you have, we haven't been had certainty of which festivals are going to happen and in what form they're going to happen. So, but it's, 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 you know, what, what you guys are doing is, is very important to us with, uh, certainly with independent film. Uh, you guys give us a forum and you give us a way to get, get a bit of attention and get our heads above water. So uh, I think we're I'm certainly grateful to you guys. David, I uh, have the same question for you. I know uh, you guys were set to premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival, which was uh, canceled. And I remember uh, in March, someone asking me, you know, do you think they're gonna cancel the Tribeca Film Festival? I said, what are they gonna do? Cancel New York City? And apparently <laughs> that's, uh, so uh, if you could start by uh, talking about that that with us and then uh the further plans for your uh release that was that was super super hard um not gonna lie you know i've i've um you know i i know that we're both in so many ways so i don't want to sort of sound like woe is me um and i'm generally somebody who tries to err on the side of the positive and find the silver lining and keep my chin up um and uh, and I, I think I have for the most part, um, but I found that it's also kind of been healthy and, and, and good to just also own uh, when something sucks and that sucked. <laughs> um, you know, we're a, we're a small movie uh, trying to punch above its weight and, um, and sort of opening Tribeca was a big deal for us. Um, and it's a, it's very, you know, I think it, I, I don't think it's a movie that's exclusively about or only New Yorkers might relate, uh, but it is very much a love story uh, to New York. Um, and so, so that was, you know, it was very much uh, a great platform for the film, but uh, there are silver linings. We did, uh, the, the jury competition did continue and we were fortunate that the jury responded and we, um, we did win a couple of awards. Uh, Asola Abdulina, one of my co-writers, who's also the lead actress, won Best Actress, uh, which is amazing. Um, so deserved. Uh, I mean, they all deserved it, but uh, that was special. And uh, in Best Cinematography. So that was, that was, that was helpful to us. Um, we, after that, uh, as a team, we kind of decided we would sort of, sit on the film and because just sort of the uncertainties of the marketplace and um sort of held back from getting reviews or sharing it with buyers uh just 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 because you know we didn't really know how 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 things were going to play out um but uh so i think um in a way 
if I had to say, I mean, if I could back up just a little bit, the film was very much born of, uh, I wrote it with two of my leads, uh, two of my lead actresses, and they, uh, we all sort of brought our real stories into the film and uh, our sort of adapted our family stories and uh, they went on to play themselves in the film. So this, this was a very sort of personal, uh, personally, um, you know, we were all at very sort of sensitive points in our lives and looking to deal with our work, d deal with our stuff in our work. And um, so that was, that was the origin of it. Um, but the interesting thing about our process was the, the deeper we kind of went into our stuff, our personal stuff, and um, uh, throughout the writing of it and then throughout the shooting of it, we found that we were dealing with a lot of very real, sensitive, raw, uh, charged political issues. Um, but, you know, there's, there's the idea that, you know, the personal is political and the political is personal. But in this case, it really sort of was that. But what was great about it is that we didn't start with a political agenda. We started with how do we, how do we, how do we heal? How do we address uh, our issues? <laughs> um, but it just so happened that all of our issues were so wrapped up with real political sort of problems, issues, and constructs. Um, so, uh, you know, without giving too much away, there's a lot of, there's a lot of horrible stuff that's happened since Tribeca uh, that, you know, unfortunately the film was, is even more relevant now than it was uh, before uh, when we started making it. Um, I mean, it was already very, uh, but it, it's sort of scarily even more so, um, now. So, so yeah, it's been a very interesting sort of process. Uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about your casting process and, uh, what, what went well and, uh, how, uh, any, uh, anecdote that, uh, was interesting. Well, it's interesting. I mean, the, the, it's, it's been quite a few years between my first feature film, The Assassination of Richard Nixon, and this film. And on that film, uh, I'd get sent, uh, you know, videotapes of, of, of the early rounds of casting. Then I'd go in and I'd uh, meet with all of the actors in person, read with, you know, a number of people per part, except for the, the parts that were offered, like uh, uh, to, to Sean Penn and Naomi Watts, but then all, all the rest of the casting was done in person. Here, a lot of, uh, most everything was done with actors putting themselves on uh, tape, and then that's posted, which I'm sure is going to be the way going forward. And interestingly, David Sullivan, who plays the lead character, Wayne Stobierski, read for Chuck, uh, and I watched it, and I was sitting with a good friend I went to kindergarten through high school with, uh, who helped me get the film made in Milwaukee. Um, and he looked at me before I said anything. He said, well, that's, that's Wayne, isn't it? And I said, a hundred percent. It was just so obvious. I had, I had my, my Wayne. And then the, 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 the next step was, okay, well, he was so good at Chuck though. Who's going to be Chuck. And then I looked at Bill Hex, uh, tape and, um, and then I, what I do then is I start with, when I looked at Bill Hex work and, 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 uh, David Sullivan's, I start looking at work that they've done just so I'm more versed in what they've, where they've gone in their career performance wise, what kinds of characters they play. But then I, I want to meet and I do chemistry reads to put people together. It's all about, and we've all seen films with actors who we know are great in other spaces, but they, you really need them to work well together. So I did chemistry reads and um, <laughs> it's actually when, when I had the, did the chemistry read with David Sullivan and Bill Heck who plays uh, the, the best friend of, of Wayne, um, I sent that tape to my cinematographer and, and who, who had said, I would love to do this script with you, Niels. I just can't afford to do it on what you'll pay me. I just finished putting my son through college and I sent him that tape and he called up and he said, F you, F you, I'm in, I have to do this because he saw that I had found that elusive chemistry between two of the leads anyway. And then Kristen Johnson, just very quickly, that was just an offer when, when I was doing uh, my work as a director on the script. Uh, I, I just always had Kristen in mind. 
She grew up in Milwaukee. Same thing with Tanya Fisher, who plays Deidre, another local Wisconsinite I'd worked with before on a CBS show. And I just, so those were just offers, but, uh, and yeah, that's, and, and Cooper, Cooper Friedman, man, I read, I read, I read 50, 60, 70 boys in Milwaukee and uh, locally, I was looking to cast locally, but then Cooper came in in Los Angeles and he's just so natural and just a wonderful kid. And, and uh, he just completes this, uh, the core of the cast. And, and then I did the chemistry read again with him and Sully, David Sullivan. And yeah, that was clearly my guy. Yeah, he, he was just adorable. Um, I, I think yeah, that was one of the really touching parts of the picture. So David, let's continue with you and uh, talk about casting. Um, yeah. I think, you know, uh, you touched on it a little bit. Um, and, you know, how, how did you uh, connect with some of these actresses in the film? Um, and, you know, wh what was that process like? I know you're um, finally putting your uh, thoughts to the screen. And um, so much of that is dependent on, you know, who's part of that process with you and, you know, who people are going to be seeing in these roles. Well, it started with my two co-writers uh, who played two of the four uh, female leads. And uh, that was the kind of home base route uh, of the project. And we sort of built from there. I got really lucky. Uh, there were, you know, some actors that I really, really wanted to work with. Some of my favorite ac actors and actresses, people like Caitlin Scheel and Lindsay Burge, uh, Michael Chernis, uh, Rory Culkin, um, and uh, Cassandra Freeman, Carrie Young, even uh, uh, country singer uh, Sturgill Simpson. You know, it was it was just one of these lucky scenarios where I knew who I wanted to work with. I wrote I wrote them my love letters and sent away, and and they they just happened to say yes. So uh, we cast pretty quickly. A lot a, a, a lot a lot of May of 2018, and we were shooting in September. So we wrote and cast with incredible speed. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Great, thanks, David. And uh, Sonia, is there uh, anything you can tell us about casting? Um, we're just uh, excited to hear about your process there. Well, be because my story takes place in an indigenous community um, and we don't see enough indigenous characters on screen, it was really, really important to me to have uh, as many indigenous actors as possible. Um, it wasn't that hard to cast the role of the mom because the absolutely magnificent Carmen Moore um, nailed it out of the park with her audition. To a point where I started thinking afterwards, I think I actually wrote the script with her in mind to, to play the character without even knowing it, because she was exactly what, what we were looking for. And then to play the main role of Ivy, it's not easy to cast a child um, in general, regardless of any cultural background. It's just, it's harder to do, obviously, because there's, they don't have the experience and you're looking for authenticity. And, and luckily I, I, found Lake DeLille, who was actually from um, the sister community. I come from a small Mohawk community and she was from another Mohawk community. And she understood uh, the sensitive nature of the subject. And she, her family was, her mom was super supportive. And that was also something that's very important when you're working with a child, you want the, the family to, to feel comfortable and to trust you with, with the, you know, the kids' emotions and, and their time and their efforts and their energy. So we hit it off right away and we kind of like built the character together. And I think that was key in, in, in creating a solid relationship between the actors, but also in creating something that was meaningful. It was to kind of mold the characters to, 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 to them personally, to like Lake personally, like we molded Ivy to fit what Lake could give us and her range on screen. So yeah, and then the rest were all cast uh, within within uh, our my community. So that was awesome as well. That is so cool. Um, and you know, I think we can roll right into the next question with that. Um, you both have very female centric stories, um, and yours in particular is about a, a young woman. How 
how does that uh, balance, you know, in the greater lexicon of movies and um, often uh, the story being male driven? Do you feel like you're telling the other side of uh, stories that are never told or are these stories that are specific to a uh, female uh, protagonist? Well, I think in, in, in my case, it's a bit of, of both, of both of that. Um, I, as a woman, I feel like I never see, well, now more and more luckily, but from when I was growing up watching films and I love films, it was rare that I would see like a strong, not only like a woman on screen, every time there was a like female driven film, there was always like underlined that it was a female driven film. And I was like, oh, this is so annoying. <laughs> um, so there's that, but it was the same with indigenous characters. I was like, God damn it. I'm so sick of seeing all these like victims on screen. Can we see like just a powerful woman and a powerful indigenous character? So for me, that was like super important with the stories that I wanted to tell. I wanted to reflect what I see with my own eyes in the everyday life, you know, and, and to me, there's not enough of those on screen. So th definitely that was, there was, there was no doubt that, especially this film about missing and murdered indigenous women, that it wasn't going to be an indigenous, indigenous woman at the, at the, you know, telling the story. Obviously it had to come from an indigenous woman. So. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, you know, I think we've got a little more time, uh, just for you to kind of say almost anything that um, that we might have missed about uh, your film and what makes it so unique, David. Um, and uh, you know, we often ask ourselves, "What is this movie? Why why this movie?" And um, for Materna, we're we're so excited to have it as part of this festival. Um, so if you could just l let the people watching know uh, just anything uh, else that you think may, uh, that they may be interested in. I think I've said a lot of what, um, of what I hope to convey. Uh, we spend a lot of time in our lives uh, sort of curating uh, the moments and cherry picking the moments that we want people to see. Uh, since we spend most of our time online, uh, that is uh, that is a meaningful and consequential reality uh, that most of what we see about each other uh, is um, is so curated. And, you know, whether it's on Facebook or on Twitter or on uh, Instagram, uh, and you know most of what we see. Is our, is, is our presentation of either our opinions uh, or our, you know, us sort of living our best lives. And this is a movie that sort of, uh, and that is, that is a truth, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just a truth and it, it's not the whole truth. And we all know, uh, and I, you know, I, I, I partake in that culture as well. We all know that there is another truth that we aren't sharing, uh, that we are other people when we're alone and no one's watching. Um, and that part of life is also struggle <laughs> and uh, pain and loneliness and all the things, uh, people problems, human problems. And, um, and so, yeah, the film is sort of looking, looking at us in those, in those, in the more unborn, uncurated um, uh, moments. And uh, my hope is that we can have more of for that kind of uh, vulnerability uh, and empathy, because I think that's an endangered sort of space in this kind of uh, in this kind of social ecosystem. And uh, not shocking that suicide rates are at an all-time high. Uh, and um, you know that's one that's an issue that's dealt with in the film. Uh, and yeah, so my hope is that people watch this and uh, maybe feel a little bit less alone with some of the things that I think we all go through in our day-to-day -day lives, but don't really see much uh, on screen. Now, if we can go back to uh, Sonia, and Sonia, if you can just kind of give us some final closing words about Rustic Oracle and, um, and just uh, anything you want to communicate to the audience that we might not have touched on during this uh, panel. Well, I basically just want to say that we made this film, a very small film, but we made it out of 
uh, so much love and respect for families that uh, have lost a loved one, um, more specifically families of missing and murdered Indigenous women. So it's really with that, um, you know, social issue in mind that we told this story and then I wrote this story and I wanted to steer away from statistics and, and the politics that come with it. I wanted it to be more about the human side, the connection, because I feel like when you build empathy through through characters and you focus on how people can relate emotionally, then it's kind of easier to get them to maybe, you know, just feel for the people who are actually going through this in real life. So um, basically, yeah, just, you know, keep your, your minds and your hearts open to, to other people's realities. I guess that's the only thing that I wanted to say. Thanks so much, Sonia. Niels, if you can give us uh, just some closing remarks on your end. Everybody, this is the Santa Fe Independent Film Festival Directors Panel for 2020. And we're here with Sonia Ballou, David Gutnick, and Niels Muller. I love what Sonia just said about keep your hearts and minds open to other points of view. And, and, and I, I'm not quoting you exactly, but I love that sentiment. To me, that's always what, what has attracted me to filmmaking, the ability to uh, step inside and, and see the world through another set of eyes. Um, sometimes those eyes we look through can be uh, warm and welcoming. Other times it's uncomfortable, but film gives us a chance to have a look from other points of view and, and uh, look at the world uh, anew. And uh, so beyond, beyond that, which I, I think is extremely well put, uh, I think that, you know, I hope people have, have a good ride watching this film also. It's, uh, I think, I've put together a very entertaining cast. And um, uh, so, yeah, please, uh, please go out and watch the movie. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. This has been the 2020 Santa Fe Independent Film Festival Directors Panel. This was with Sonia Ballou, Niels Muller, and David Gutnick. <laughs>